A few weeks ago, an ATS-72 reportedly encountered a microburst after takeoff and lost altitude. The crew applied the escape maneuver and the aircraft climbed out safely. Hi, my name is Magna Nordal. I'm a captain and instructor on ETA aircraft. A microburst is a weather phenomenon related to thunderstorms. It is a short-lived, strong downdraft of air, resulting in both vertical and horizontal wind shear. This can be dangerous to aircraft, especially when they are taking off or landing. In this video, I will explain what microburst and wind shear are, and how we pilots can avoid them and the procedure ATA pilots follow when they encounter a situation like this. A wind shear is defined as a sudden change in wind speed or direction over a relatively short distance in the atmosphere. For example, if you are descending and you have a tailwind and then encounter an air mass with headwind, the airspeed will suddenly increase because of the inertia of the aircraft. Or, if the aircraft is climbing in a headwind and then encounter tailwind, the airspeed will decrease. Large heavy aircraft are more sensitive to those changes because they have high inertia. Light aircraft are less sensitive because they will adapt more easily to the new situation. A microburst is a downburst of air caused by a strong rain shower. When a thunderstorm cloud, which is called cumulonimbus, is forming, it collects tons of water, which is kept aloft by strong upwinds. Sooner or later, the cloud cannot hold on the water, and it starts to flow down like a waterfall. And with it, the water pulls a lot of air. When the air hits the ground, it fans out in all directions close to the ground. The velocity of the air can reach hurricane force and create a lot of damages. It's easy to understand that a microburst can be dangerous for aircraft. The force of a microburst can easily outperform an aircraft, especially when it's in landing configuration with full flaps, low speed and at low altitude. If there is a microburst on final, you will first encounter a strong headwind and a possible updraft. This causes the airspeed to increase and the pilot will by instinct reduce the power. Then the aircraft will enter an area with a strong downdraft and the aircraft will rapidly lose altitude. The pilot will by instinct pull the nose up and add power. Finally, the wind changes to a strong tailwind, causing further loss of airspeed. Now, let's have a look at the effects of a microburst at takeoff. If the center of the microburst is over the runway, the aircraft will have a headwind when it starts the takeoff roll. But as the aircraft passes under the microburst, the headwind changes to tailwind, and the aircraft will stop accelerating or even lose airspeed. If the runway is long enough, you might be able to stop on the runway. If the center of the microburst is at the end of the runway, the aircraft will have a nice headwind until it gets airborne. Then it enters the downdraft followed by the tailwind. And this is what happens to this aircraft. After it gets airborne, we can clearly see it's losing altitude before it starts to climb again. Whether this is a downdraft or an increasing tailwind, it's hard to say. But by analyzing the flight at the recorder, it will be possible to determine the vertical and horizontal forces acting on the aircraft. I have experienced a couple of microbursts, but thankfully, they happened when I was safely on the ground. The first incident happened in Malaysia. I was about to leave a building, but when I reached the reception and looked out through the glass doors, I changed my mind. The doors were rattling, and outside the rain was pouring down, or I should say horizontally, to get with branches and other loose items that passed by. Some minutes later, it was over. 
Outside, large trees have been uprooted and smashed many parked cars along a road, including this one, which belonged to my student. And when I returned to the hotel, I found the reception in total chaos because the storm had moved a lot of water and vegetation in through the windows. The second incident happened at Mamigili Airport in the Maldives. I was sitting in the cockpit waiting for boarding when I saw a range rover approaching. It was like a wall of water and soon the wind picked up and the rain started to pour down. The air traffic controller evacuated the tower because he feared the windows would fail. The wind socks disappeared. The anemometer registered a wind velocity of 70 knots before it failed. The area between the runway and the apron was covered by sand and the wind lifted it up and blew it to the apron. A foot above the apron, it was like a brown soup. This is the only time I have seen a sandstorm in heavy rain. When it was over, the apron had been transformed to a beach. The mechanics had to inspect the aircraft for damages. Thankfully, there were none and we could depart after a while. But it took the airport staff three days to sweep away the sand from the apron. Airliners with turbofan engines have equipment that can detect wind shear and microburst. The most common system is an airborne Doppler weather radar. It detects changes in the velocity of the raindrops and therefore changes in wind velocity and direction. Major airports do also have wind shear alert systems, which can consist of Doppler radar, a network of anemometers around the airport, an optical detection system that detects the movement of dust particles, or a combination of those. ATR and other turboprop aircraft have a radar, but they cannot detect wind shear. Therefore, we have to rely on observations from others and our ability to predict the possibility of wind shear and microburst. Here is one example. A few years ago, I was on approach to runway 19 right at Bangkok's Yuanabhum Airport. It was night and the weather was very good. But on the weather radar, we saw a small intense rain shower near the threshold of the runway. And looking out, we could see the entire airport with the exemption of the lights on runway 19 right. That area was like a black hole. This video is not from the actual flight, but it gives an idea how it was. On the TCAS, we could see an airliner ahead of us. As the aircraft got closer to the runway, we started to climb. The pilot informed the control tower that they were going around because of wind shear. Okay, there was no reason for us to follow him, so we decided to abort the approach. We leveled off, retracted flaps and landing gear, started to climb, and asked ATC for permission to make a turn to the left, which was granted. A few minutes later, we landed on the parallel runway in good weather conditions. On the 14th of October 2021, a Woe Pass Airlines ATR 72500, registration Papa Papa, Papa Tango Quebec, performing flight 2267 from Presidente Prudente to Sao Paulo in Brazil, with 23 passengers and four crew, had just departed the airport when the aircraft encountered a microburst and lost altitude. The weather reports before and after the incident are quite interesting. 35 minutes earlier, at 05 local time, or 08 UTC, the weather was very good, with light and variable wind, good visibility and no precipitation or low clouds. One hour later, 
25 minutes after. The weather report shows wind gusting up to 40 knots and moderate thunderstorm with rain. And the air pressure increased with 5 hectopascal. In one hour, that's a lot. So it's obvious that the weather changed very fast. When looking at the video, we can see that the clouds are coming in from the left and behind of the observer. The bulges under the clouds are called mamas because they resemble female breasts. They indicate unstable air. And those rugged clouds are very common near rain showers. Here is a time lapse of a rain shower in Bangkok. The clouds are very similar to what you saw in the previous video clip. Despite all precautions, we can still encounter a microburst. So, what do we do if we encounter a microburst or a wind shear shortly after takeoff? The procedure is to establish a maximum climb. Here, I will describe the procedure for ATR aircraft, but the procedure is very similar to other aircraft types. When we encounter a wind shear or microburst after takeoff, the indications are loss of airspeed and altitude. If we are less than 1500 feet above the ground, the ground proximity warning system will give the following alert. Don't sink. Don't sink. The first action is to pull the nose 10 degrees up above the horizon. You must disregard the flight director commands. Apply maximum power, which means you move the power levers to the ramp. This gives you 100% power and is what we do for go around. If this is not enough, you move the power levers all the way forward to the wall. This gives 115% power. But don't worry, the engine can uh, take that. If you are still losing altitude, you pull the nose further up until the stick shaker activates. Then you ease back a little. You must not change the configuration of the aircraft. Therefore, if the landing gear is down, you leave it down. The idea is that the landing gear will absorb some of the impact force if you hit the ground. And you must not retract the flaps. You will need all the lift you can get. Pilots practice this scenario in simulator at least once every three years. When we watch the video, we can clearly see that the nose of the aircraft is pitching up. So this is a textbook recovery. And after some seconds, the aircraft climbs safely away. I want to thank Rafael Chechimenez for allowing me for using his video. It's very unique to see an aircraft fly through a microburst. So please check out his YouTube channel. I put a link in the description below. And that's all I have for this time. I hope you liked it and please support my channel by sharing with your friends and all that. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.